Well, what about you guys? How's it going? Hope you're all keeping well today. Hope everything is good where you are. Hope you're keeping safe. Hope you're keeping well. I hope you're not like Northern Ireland at the minute. That is pretty much in a lockdown part two. <laughs> yeah, it's it's pretty nuts. But we're not here to talk about any of that nonsense today. So if you've been following the channel for the past number of weeks, I've been fairly talking about different editing softwares from reviewing suites to just giving five reasons why you should use certain ones. If you haven't seen any of that series already, you can hit it in the top right hand corner, but it has been really good fun because I've got to play about with different sort of editing softwares from Photoshop, Lightroom, DaVinci Resolve, Luminar 4 as well. But I'm adding another one to the list here, but today it's not a five reasons. This is just a full review of some software that I was sent that I'm going to have a little run through with you today. And I've actually been really excited to have a good play about with this. So about two or three weeks ago, I was sent a copy of this software to review and play about. And I remember playing about with the better software of this in its original days, but it's been really good to see it progress so much. I mean, it was this this was started in 2015 and to see what it's become now is just outstanding. This is made by a company called Serif and it's Affinity Photo. You've probably might have heard of it. So Affinity Photo is just a Photoshop alternative. So I'm gonna run through the software with you today. I'm gonna talk about some pros, some cons, and just give you my overall honest opinion. I'm very thankful to the guys at Serif for letting me have a copy of Affinity Photo to play about with. But in no way does that mean that they have sponsored or paid me to do this review. This is just my own overall opinion. But like I say, thank you very much, Sarah, for letting me have a test about with this little piece of kit here. And I have to say, I have been pretty impressed. Some things that I think could probably change over time. But to see where it's come now compared to when I played with the better version originally, it's... It's fantastic. And as the years as Affinity Photo has progressed on, it started off with being a Mac exclusive, but they have now moved on to Mac and Windows. I've got it on a Mac here. I've got my MacBook Air. It's a 2013 edition. Quite old, but it's still, <laughs> it still keeps running very well. So enough of me waffling on. Let's get, let's have a look at the software itself and have a little chat about it. So I've just got a photograph opened up here in Affinity Photo. It's a raw file. And Affinity Photo does have its own like, raw processing which is very good so you don't have to go to different softwares to edit your raw files it's all there and its layout is pretty much very similar to photoshop with a few different exceptions here you've got your exposures white balance shadows and all here you can do your lens correction details which is the sharpening tones which gives you curves and all so it's pretty much what you would have been used to if you're a Photoshop user already, or even a Lightroom user as well. You've got on the side, you've got the likes of, you know, the hand tool to drag around your photo, your zoom in, zoom out, red eye, cropping. So just your standard stuff as you would get in Photoshop or any other software. You've got your histogram and all here too. So I've got this photograph. I've already done some editing on here, but I've just got it turned off at the minute. So everything is set to zero. But if I do this, so this is just the before and this is the after the editing. Boom, what a really nice edit this has done here. So I've just played about with the exposure. You've got your black point, which is similar to playing about with blacks in uh, Camera Raw. You got your clarity, saturation. I do find at times that the highlights and shadows are a bit bitty. So I think it can pull out a lot more information than what Camera Raw can do, I find. Like I only sit in the 25% here, but only at 90 on the highlights. But you can see it's, I've actually been able to get a lot more information than what I would have done out of camera raw. But I didn't want to go too crazy with this photograph here. So I really like that. Uh, with the lens, you've got lens corrections in there. I just put the 35mm, even though I'm using the 24mm, the difference is very minute. The cropping and uh, vignetting and all I've got. I quite like the sharpening option within the raw processing, I have to say. It's nice and simple. You only really get the amount and radius, but there's, there's just something about the way it processes is quite nice. If I really zoom into this photograph here, just into the heart of the wolf, and if I turn off the detail, and turn it back on. I just think it's really nice. I have to say, if I go to the full 100%, you know, it really sharpens out my photograph here. And then of course I've got noise reduction on to, I can play about with my curves. You've got a separate black and white option and I can do split toning. So just, just really anything that you would have got from before. I have of course cropped into this photo. I've done like a 16 by nine crop on here, which I can get from the gear. So 
similar again if you want to do one by one or anything like that and then if I go to develop that then just brings my photo into the main sort of editing uh, part of the software itself so this is just the main editing panel here of affinity photo and again usability and all is very similar you go up to the top you've got your file edit you got a text option, you can play with your layers, you've got your filters. So if you are used to any sort of editing softwares like Photoshop, you probably might find the swap over might be quite easy because it is very similar. It is a bit more condensed, I have to say, compared to Photoshop, but that can be a really good thing. You go over to the left hand side, you've got all your different tools. Again, you can drag around the photo, you've got your crop. You've got your healings and your paintbrushes. Over to the right hand side, you have things like your histogram. You've got your layer box. You've got your history. So pretty standard stuff in here. Now, what I really, really love about Affinity Photo is that if I was playing about with Photoshop before, if I wanted to do like different sort of layer masks and I had to go to the top, go to layer or go to filters and select out the option that I want. Whereas what I can do here is if I want to create like a layer mask, I can go to adjustment and all the options are here. So if I say I want to do a bit of like HSL, it then creates a separate layer mask that gives me all my HSL options that I can then control from there on in. Or if I maybe want to do something a bit different, like if I wanted to add in some more curves or anything, it just automatically uh, puts in that uh, layer masks just so instantly and so quickly, rather than me having to hunt through, it's all together and it, it just makes the editing process just so much more quicker. I'm not a big fan of the vignette option in their camera raw. Whereas what I like to do is if you go down to here where you go to live filters, you got a few more different options here. So you've got like your motion blurs, noise, clarity. You've also got an option for a vignette in here, which is just here. So it just creates another sort of separate layer underneath your background. And I can then just play about with a bit of vignette in here and there. And if I just, just do a little muck around, just so you get a general idea. All I just need to then do is just go merge and you can see this has created uh, it, it did create a layer but if you go to merge it then just merges into the photograph but you can get rid of that if you want to so you can see my history it's shown me everything that I have done so far if I want to take that out you know add in a vignette layer merge it down or anything if I wanted to keep it as its own separate layer I can then double tap onto it and then just keep editing away. Any of the sort of options that you go to, like you can see with curves, or if I go into, let, let's say if I do something a bit different, let's go to exposure and add that in. It does give you some sort of presets that you can add in, so that can make the editing process a lot more quicker too. So it's, it's just ridiculously user-friendly. And of course, you'll also have things like your spot healing or your patch tools. So say, for example, if I wanted to get rid of this here bit of cloud, what I can do is if I hit S or just go over to the clone stamp or the clone brush, I can then just do what I've done in Photoshop before, hit Alt. You can see it shows where the anchor is and it's always there. That's what I quite like. It just keeps that anchor in place. I can then change the hardness if I want. If I just make that a little bit softer and then just keep editing away. I can extend out the brush if I want to just by using the little sort of like brackety styles or I can just go over to the top. You know, I can edit out that cloud bit that way or I can just go over to the patch tool. I can select from here. You can, you can go into these different tabs and extend out what all is in there. So if I go to the patch tool, I do find their patch tool is quite weird. So I have to sort of loop around to where I want to edit out and then I just sort of hover over an area like so you can see rather than me having to drag around the patch tool place it in like so and it just creates like a little mask it's quite weird to get used to it first but it's not too bad I do kind of prefer Photoshop's version of it I'm just gonna bring back that cloud and let's just zoom out here or even if I just wanted to say go into the likes of this rock here i think it's quite distracting i can just circle around it and then 
just hover over a different area and then just select and there that's that's a pretty much out of the way you also got things like your crops similar again to camera raw i can then just do uh, the 16 by 9 one by one i can change the ratio if i want to so it's just all standard stuff here it's things that you would be used to before but it's just i just find that it's a little bit more user friendly you know with things like the adjustment layers and all i i do really like that and of course the fun doesn't stop there when it comes to editing you can of course add in text if you want to so you can just do so much with your software i've been really happy with what all i've been able to do with this here so there's just so much and for the price that you pay for this it's amazing with what all you can do here and whenever i tried this in the early days this wasn't here but now in the newer versions it is you've got the likes of creating a panorama you can merge as an hdr just all those different options are now there there's just so much that you can do in this software now if you are somebody that is a photoshop user and wants to move over to affinity photo well the great thing is that you can actually open up and save photoshop files jpeg files pngs if you want to what you have to remember is that if you go to save as the file gets saved as an affinity photo file but you have to go to export so a little bit of getting used to with the export sort of side i tend to hit save as but yeah you can see here you've got png jpeg you can save a gif a tiff but you do have a psd file so if you have existing psd files you can open that up here no problem pfds so you've got a wide variety of different options that you can export to. So you've got that option of uh, cross-processing here. So that way you don't have to worry about losing any existing PSD files if you move to this software completely. So you're probably sitting there going, yourself, wow, this software sounds too good. It sounds too perfect. Where do I sign up and all? It just sounds like the best thing ever. Well, I have been very impressed with playing about with it, but there's a few things that I still think that needs to be worked on. For me, coming from Photoshop to this, there's some things that I just need to get used to, but there's a few things that I am not overly happy with. I think that the raw section of developing can be really worked on, like where the different tabs are. I think they can be moved about. It's quite hard because they're so just all over the place. So I think some of that can be moved around just to help with usability. The patch tool, again, I'm just getting used to that there, but I don't like that sort of loop around and there you go sort of start. I think if you just sort of just draw as you go, then it makes it so much more easier. It's, it's those little things that I think just really make a big difference. But a few other things that I'm not a big fan of is, yes, it's good that the likes of HDR processing and all in, is in there. Now, I've only done it the once where I try to merge an HDR because I can't stand Adobe's HDR processing. So I really wanted to see what Affinity Photos version is like. And it takes far too long to load it took forever to merge everything all together and by the time it was done i just i didn't want to edit it so i didn't so maybe if you have a faster computer or something like that compared to maybe what i have you might find there's a smoother process but so far i i wouldn't really do much hdr with this but what's been the biggest thing that i have been really disappointed about with affinity photo now this is again something that i've been used to and something that's been a standard and i can understand that affinity photo is still developing it's still quite a young software and it doesn't want to fully copy photoshop but the one thing that i really don't like about using it is especially if you're a raw shooter if you used to photoshop you would do an edit on raw when you hit develop you get like a little XMP file, like a little sort of side card, so that when you reopen up that photo in Photoshop, you can then just continue editing. You haven't lost anything. Affinity Photo doesn't do that. If as soon as you've hit the develop option, that's it. That's it. Pretty much locked in. The software was to close, and you haven't saved anything. You've you've basically lost what you've edited. You have to start all over again. So. I do hope with future versions they can do an XMP or something that's very similar that is maybe tied in with Affinity Photo so that way we have an option. But to me, I, I wouldn't use it too much for raw editing. The raw editing process is very good. 
And I do love the final outcomes, like they're sharpening their contrast. I love it. I think it is so much more nicer than Adobe Photoshop, but just the lack of that sidecar really does is, is a big, that's what you might have to really get used to and accept if you're moving from Photoshop to Affinity Photo. But overall, I've, I've been really impressed with this. I've actually been using it a lot more than Photoshop. Like say for my thumbnails as of late with on the YouTube channel, I've been doing most of the editing using Affinity Photo because I can still open Photoshop files. I can still open JPEGs, no problem. So I do really like it. There's still a lot of developing, I think that still needs to go on with Affinity Photo, like some of the things I mentioned in the cons there, but it's only about 40 quid for what you pay one off and what you get in this software. It's, ah, uh, it's a no brainer. I mean, it, that that's the main reason why I would swap from Photoshop. I don't really use Photoshop all that much myself, but I have been using this a good fair bit more. Is it a main editor for me? No, I'm still going to stick to Lightroom for those sorts of things. But for anything outside of that or just a quick edit here and there, I'll keep using Affinity Photo because it's very user friendly. And it's just, yeah, just things like the adjustment layers, I just love. But it's a real shame that there is some of those things that I do let it down. But it's only small things that I reckon will progress as this software keeps going on because there's still updates going on and that's the great thing about Serif is that they're constantly listening to people too, they're constantly listening to opinions. So Affinity Photo, I do highly recommend it. If you are changing from Photoshop to this, do be prepared for a bit of a learning curve and a bit of an adjustment period, but it's a pretty easy adjustment. Like some of the sort of shortcuts and keys and layouts, it's very similar, but just, yeah, get, get used to the fact that you don't have that XMP file there. But yeah, are you looking for a new editing software but don't want to subscribe to anything? Have you been looking at Affinity Photo and thinking, hmm, maybe I'll download that? Or are you a user already? Well, let me know with some of your thoughts down below in the comments. I hope this video was helpful for you. Very thankful that you guys came along to check it out. It's always very much appreciated. You can, of course, stay up to date with any sort of future videos. Just like, share, subscribe, and hit that wee bell icon so that you can stay up to date to all the different sort of photography-related topics on this channel. But until then, guys, keep being safe, keep staying healthy, and enjoy the rest of your day.